Hello. You all thought you could get rid of me, but you were wrong. <laughs> it's been a really, really long month. Hello, jokes aside, welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy, and I make, um, what do I usually say when I introduce myself in my videos? It's been so long, I can't even remember my own introduction. Today I want to talk about Hoyas. I'm just gonna have kind of a little informal video. It's been a little while since I made one. I'm gonna, you know, I'm getting back into the hang of things. Uh, and about a month ago, maybe a little more, I really honestly have no idea how long it's been since I made a video. I have plenty of excuses. I will not get into them. I posted a picture of a little Hoya in a little terracotta pot. And I said, do not make the same mistake as me and plant your Hoyas in terracotta pots for everyone knows that a Hoya should never be planted in a terracotta pot. This is like a debate that you can find in any Hoya forum. It is, it's, it's one of the main points of controversy and Hoyas are a very controversial plant. If you can hear the construction outside, I do apologize. You may remember that a couple of months ago, I said there was construction going on outside of my apartment. And wouldn't you know that it's still going on? Okay, so, uh, people got up in arms, the world was set aflame, and I was chased down with pitchforks and torches. Uh, now, the reason that a lot of people say that you should never put your Hoyas in terracotta pots uh, one of them is that a lot of Hoyas need to be kept kind of moist all the time. Hoya serpens, for example, Hoya uh, uh, lacunosa, or Hoya bella. They prefer a more humid environment and they do need to be watered a bit more often than those other ones. So for those ones in particular, I would never put them in a terracotta pot because I don't want the soil to dry out. The other reason that a lot of people say that you should never put them in a terracotta pot is the roots. The roots are very grabby. The roots really like, because that, you know, they're epiphytes and they're accustomed to growing up the sides of trees and they use the roots to do so. And terracotta is kind of a porous material um, and the roots can kind of adhere to that terracotta. Then when it comes time to replant the Hoya, you may have to rip the roots completely because they've, they're like glued to the sides of the terracotta pot, in which case you can damage the plant and it may not do as well as it could in its new home if the root system was perfectly healthy. Now some people had some suggestions for me. They said, submerge the terracotta pot in water and it will moisten the soil and the roots, and then they will easily come detached from the terracotta. So I'm gonna try that today, because these little Hoyas, the cuttings that I received a few months ago, um, if you're interested in seeing my little Hoya cutting plant haul, you can check out that video. Uh, they're ready for repotting, and they're in these tiny little pots. I have to water them sometimes twice a day because the root system is so strong. There's such little soil in here and the terracotta absorbs the water. So it's really a problem for me. I want to transport that transport. I want to, is transport the right word for that? I don't think I need more wine. I want to move them to little plastic pots. I also have here a Hoya Marillii Affinity Red Leaves. I'm pretty sure I got that right. Anywho, I'm rambling, let's get down to business. So the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is have another sip of wine. Then you need to create your orchid potting mix medium. What I like to use is something that I don't have on the table right now, so I need to go fetch it. I fetched it. So <clears throat> in my orchid potting mix, I use just a wee little bit of this houseplant potting mix that I buy from my local garden center. And it's basically, it's got like a little bit of compost, uh, torbe blonde brune, um, 
I don't remember the English word for that. Peat moss. Peat moss compost, a little bit of fertilizer, and uh, that's it. That's really it. It's a, very, it's a very simple mixture. And then I use perlite for plenty of aeration. And oh, good lord, I'm making a mess. And uh, tree bark meant for orchids. The perlite has a hole in the bag and I'm making a fantastic mess. How do I make do? Well, I live in a small apartment in Paris, have a little balcony outside, but there's a bunch of construction going on, so I'm definitely not gonna set up my camera out there. Uh, I don't have a garden, I don't have a garage, so I use a big old plastic bag to mix my medium. <clears throat> in this right now, I have, I have a pretty good mix going on. I will have to show a close-up to the camera, but it does need more perlite. So, I put in some perlite. Do, 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 do. Ooh, that's a lot. Huh? Oh my god, perlite everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. Breathing in it all in so that you develop lung cancer by the age of 45. All right, it's not very long from now, trust me. Um, some orchid bark. Unfortunately, this is like really large. The chunks, I mean, are really large. Usually they're a bit smaller, uh, but I guess they were all out of small trees. Then I just, uh, you know, seal it up here and do a little shake and bake. You know, you don't want to be too vigorous, otherwise it's going to explode and you're going to have a mess the size of the one that I've created here. So first I'm going to start with Hoya Shuka. This was a hybrid created by botanist Emilio Begin. He's Belgian and it's a cross between Carnosa and Serpens. The other one that he created is Hoya Matilde. Shuka is a cute nickname that he would use for his wife. It's like a cute Belgian nickname. And Mathilde was the name of the princess of Belgium, Belgium at the time. And uh, now I believe she's queen. So she's got a Hoya named after her. Moving on. I have this little Hoya in a terracotta pot. So first I'm going to try to pull it out and see what happens. I can feel the roots ripping. And I really don't want to destroy this. Oh. Okay. Now I will say, it has cleanly come out of my terracotta pot, no water needed. So maybe myth debunked. I don't know. I really like Hoyas. It's pretty obvious. I have 24 types. But it's not just because I think it's a beautiful plant, it's because there's always some kind of controversy. There are like, people get really hot-headed about Hoyas, and I just find it really curious. I mean, from the very beginning, they were going to be published under an, another name, Sperlingia, by uh, a botanist named Martin Val in the 1800s, and he wanted to name them Sperlingia after a, uh, a great doctor and botanist from the 17th century, um, he wanted to honor him and the work that he did in the world of botany, but Spalingia was associated with the plot to poison the king in, of Denmark with his buddy Kofiutz Utfeldt. And so in the 1800s, nobody wanted to publish Spalingia because they didn't want their, their publication to be associated with one of the greatest traitors in Danish history. Um, and then he, uh, Martin Bal died in 1804. And then along came Robert Brown, who named it Hoya after his best friend, Thomas Hoy. So there are, uh, there are some people who believe that they should be renamed to the genus Sperlingia, um, but you know, that's not my fight. <laughs> choose your battles, you know, choose your battles. Christina Burton, she was an American botanist. Uh, there are some really big names in Hoya research, Poppenberg, Ted Green, Christina Burton. Christina Burton was a very sassy American botanist who felt very strongly about Hoyas, and she did know a lot about them. And she 
had very strong feelings about other botanists, like Kloppenberg and Ted Green. And she had a publication called The Hoyan, which you can still read online, even though she's passed away. And I'll tell you what, she is a feisty woman. She has certain thoughts about Kloppenberg and Ted Green, which I, I cannot, I can neither support nor, nor refute. Uh, but it's a good read because she, 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 she says some funny things. Yeah. If you want a dramatic, if you, if you want to read about botany, Hoya in general, take a look at the Hoyan, and um, you'll find it's more interesting after all. That guy's all potted up. What do you know? Now I have nothing more to babble on about. Okay, next we have Hoya Lobii. Okay, let's try the water. We'll soak him in the water for a moment. See what happens. Meanwhile, prepare this little pot. I hope you guys don't mind that I'm doing like a little plant and chat. It's been... 2019 came on strong, you could say. Some things went not according to plan. And gosh, it really doesn't want to come out. Well, I hope that you're here. Your year has gone better than mine so far. Things are on the up and up. There we go. Really root bound. You know, people say that Hoyas like to be root bound. Um, they say that it encourages blooming. If you leave Hoyas in really tiny pots and allow them to be root bound. I don't know about that. It could just be a rumor. I haven't found any proof of that. I've done some research and I haven't found any evidence that this is true. But what I do know is that they do okay in the same pot for a long time. Even like this, it could have stayed like this for some time and probably wouldn't have complained, but I have noticed that its growth has slowed. So in my opinion, it's time, it's time, the time has come. Now, I want to loosen up the soil. It's taking forever. It's going to move on, put it in some water. Voila. Okay. Koya Lobii is doing quite well for me. I think I read that it's a, bit, it's a bit more difficult for beginners. Ouch, I just broke a nail. That's a bummer, huh? Oh well. 2019, you know? We thought 20... 17 was bad, then 2018 came along, now it's 2019. I'm only joking, of course. I'm quite an optimistic person, but I think it is important when frustrations occur to take a little time out. So I was feeling overwhelmed and I took a step back from YouTube and Instagram a little bit and went on holidays to the Canary Islands, which was okay. I mean, I had a great time with my husband. It was very nice. It was cheap and it was just very uh, not lush, I guess you could say. There's like no plant life, very little plant life. It's like a desert island. Um, and then there's the ocean. The ocean is quite nice. This is why serpents, and I want to be really careful with it because I like it. So we'll do the water. Um, Canary Islands, the food was good, but I was just kind of bored with the scenery. Uh, but I got a chance to relax which is really what I needed. And since we've come home, things have been much better. My cat's like freaked out. I don't usually, I don't like to talk about my cats very much because I feel like it makes me look like a crazy cat lady. I'm not a crazy cat lady. I like my cats, but I don't like, like cats. Like I don't sit around looking at pictures of cats on 
the internet all day. That's not another crazy cat lady. Okay. Anyway, um, my cat's got sick. Very, 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 very sick for like a month. And then one of them freaked out and started attacking my other cat as if she were a feral animal, even though they've like been best friends for two years. And it was like a really stressful situation on top of, I can't believe I'm complaining about this. There are like so many more things in the world that are way more stressful than your cats behaving badly. <laughs> it's really stressful. <laughs> It's over now, everything's fine. I don't know, what do you do to decompress? I mean, when you just kind of have knock after knock, what do you do to like chill out? Let me know in the comments below. So there's Serpent, she's all planted up and happy. Now I have this cutting, the Hoya Virilii Affinity Red Leaves. It's in sphagnum moss. I've personally never, uh, I guess my camera stops recording at the 10 minute mark. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this guy in a terracotta pot since I've had such luck potting my little cuttings in terracotta pots. It's going to develop a magnificent root system <clears throat> and then I'll have a plant. Now, I have a problem with my Hoya Breviolata. You may have seen my Hoya Breviolata unpacking video. If you haven't, you can take a look. Um, I'm having a problem with it because it was in really rich soil when it arrived. That was easy. And it developed root rot, and now it is just a freaking mess. So I have to take some trimmings, some cuttings, and start some new Breviolata plants. So I'm going to do that in my next video, I guess. Maybe not my next video, but in an upcoming video. I plan to do a plant tour soon, because I haven't done one in a while, and I have a lot of new plants that I didn't show in my previous plant tours. If you have any other suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll get back to you. Y'all said you wanted a long video, so I have given thee a very long video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Ugh. Got perlite in my wine.